Hi Will. Hi Graham. Good to see you. You too. Hi, I'm Graham Taylor. Um, I'm here today for the first video in our series, Let's Cook. Let's Cook is a, a series that is going to be about the challenges in food production. Um, today, I'm here talking to Will. Your, your passion is amazing. The podcast is amazing. I want to hear more about that. I want to hear more about life on your farm, yeah. what it's like. And we're going to be looking at the, the issue of EU consumers and food. You know, what do they know about food? What is their attitude towards food? And what challenges do we face when it comes to food production in the modern age? What do you say? Let's cook. So Will, the summer has finally arrived in Belgium. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day outside. So we don't want to be eating something heavy. We want to have something that's fresh. Um, Perfect. So we've got a lot of really great ingredients um, yeah. here in front of us. Some of them you'll, you'll recognize, I guess, from your own farm even. Barley right there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at that. I mean, yeah. We're going to put this into, into the water. We've got some boiling water there. Be in there for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, we'll just throw that in there now. Put a little bit in there. That'll do. And while I'm doing that, maybe it's a good opportunity for us to talk a bit about your farm and, and yeah. what you do. And I mean, barley, obviously, is one of the, the crops that you grow. But tell me a bit about how you, well, how do you go about growing barley and what, what are the, the challenges that you face when you're doing it? It's been a pretty good year, though. We could have done with a bit more rain to fill out the grains a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it hasn't been the worst growing season where we are. Yep. Um, I know some areas of the country have had it a bit tougher, but... It is a di there's a lot of barley growing around us, but it is a difficult crop to grow. Right. Um, what we, makes it so difficult? <laughs> because everything wants to kill it. The same, <laughs> same as any other <laughs> same as any other farmer will tell you. you. You put all this investment into your into your crop, and then yeah. you leave it standing out there in the weather, and there's a million right. things that want to destroy it. But I mean, we had a terrible problem in I think it was 2010. Uh, it was a very very humid season, right. and the aphids, um, barley yellow dwarf virus pretty much wiped out our entire barley crop wow. um, and that was not a good year and it's it's quite difficult to explain that you put such a lot of effort into growing these crops as yeah, well absolutely it's, not, it's, in, it's, right? it's not just the money it's yeah. the, you you are emotionally invested yeah sure and there's an awful lot of work and it, it, there's nothing better than you go out there and, and you plough the field and you get this wonderful seed bed yeah. and you put the, your, all your, 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 your blood and sweat and your hope for the year into this crop yeah. and then it gets wiped out just like that. So what, what kind of, if you don't want me asking, what percentage of your, your business in, in that year, for example, was kind of lost because you, you lost that whole crop? I guess about 20%. Wow, that's a big chunk. Mm -hmm. right? You know, just one little thing, or it seems like a little thing, yeah. but, you know, it's so easy to control it. We, we're using as little pesticides and artificial fertilizers as we, as we have to. Sure. There's a million things want to kill my crops, and I and I and I have to use these things. Yeah. They're just a tool, like you have a box of tools sure. in your workshop. That's what they are. I think there's a growing appetite, not just with with consumers but farmers as well, especially in the UK. So we're very conscious at the moment of that. Maybe mistakes have been made in the past. Hedgerows have been pulled no. out. I have four children. I want my farm to be in a better condition when I pass it on to them. Okay, right, well, let's get these tomatoes into the, into the bowl. And chuck those in there. Expertly chopped, <laughs> I have to say. Beautiful. Right, let's move those out of the way and let's get these onions in. So often I see people who, you know, you, you stop here. You want to go with the middle. Exactly. You take, yeah. you, you take the nice white bit, yeah. you leave the rest, but the rest is every bit as good. That's so right. we want to make sure that we're using it all. Okay. All right. Food wasters, again, you know, don't chop your fingers off. Um, I will try not to. <laughs> <laughs> food wasters, it's such a, such a big issue. I mean, it must, it must almost break your heart as a farmer. Oh. Sort of going, putting all that effort into producing food and then to see just tons and tons and tons it go does. to waste. Oh, absolutely. And, and, but what's good is, is that people are, people are talking about it now, aren't they? Yeah. It's become a thing where it's on TV. People are, people are talking about it all the time. Yep. I think there's growing awareness and a lot of the supermarkets are even waking up to it, aren't they? And they're, 
there's suddenly, I mean, you look in the UK, there's there's food banks, there's, yeah. there's areas that are really struggling, and, and it does, and, and you see that food waste, and you think, it, it's immoral, it's, it, it's criminal. Right, well, we've got this beautiful plate here of, uh, of chopped up veggies. So, first thing, we've got the, the fava beans, which we boiled. Yeah. Um, we've popped those out of the skin, so we've yeah. got those there. We've got our peas, beautifully cut up radishes, expertly crushed garlic, <laughs> well yeah. done. So, we're gonna leave those there. Um, I'll just pop that fava bean on there. Next thing we're going to do is lemons. Yeah. Go chopping that one up. What you do, little little trick here. Oh, okay. Onto the board. Yeah. Palm of your hand and just give it a bit of a bit of a push backwards and forwards. See, and I'm, it helps, see, see helps I'm really helps learning here. Out. Yeah, there right. You okay. Go, you know, you're, learn, you're learning lots. I'm learning lots. Yeah. It's great. Um, and then we'll, we'll chop it up. But you know, the the climates that they have to grow is citrus fruits in. It makes it. It's really difficult, and they lose about up to about 40% of their yield if they're, wow. not, if they're not able to, okay. to, to use the right, right solutions. Yeah. The, the challenge is people think that it's, it's simple. You, you stick mm -hmm. a tree in the ground, you leave it and, and wow, hey presto, some lemons appear. Yeah. And it's, it's just not the case. And once again, in, in those areas, they would, the community would be reliant exactly. on it. It's not just the farmers and the growers, is it? No. There's, all the, there's the people it's who the supply jobs, them and, and the knock-on yeah. effect. And, exactly. Yeah. You do something called um, FaceTime Farmer. Yeah, right? so FaceTime it's, the, it's, a farmer. it's the brainchild of a, of a farmer called Tom Martin, and he came up with this idea of through FaceTime and Skyping, and we've all got these supercomputers in our pockets now, haven't we, that yep. just weren't there a few years ago. It's true. And, and the idea Can was that, that a bit of mix up while you're the talking? idea was that uh, teachers, schools could sign up to it, and they would be paired up with a farmer yep. who's, who's volunteered. And um, every couple of weeks, you speak to them for 10 or 15 minutes on your farm. This sure. is what we're doing now. This is why we're doing it. Yeah. I mean, and I, I've spoke to a couple of classes of children. I, I spoke to a class of six and seven year olds the other day. Yeah. And the questions they had, it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, yeah. to be honest, though, I absolutely love about talking to you, Will. I mean, you, your passion. It just it just comes through. It's absolutely fantastic, and we need we need more people like you talking about food and yeah. how it's produced and getting people interested. Because one of the, I guess one of the advantages, one of the things you've taken advantage of is the ability to use a tool like um, like a, a a blog or a, mm -hmm. a, like Twitter to, to reach people. If 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 we don't tell our stories, then someone else will. Yeah. Someone else who isn't involved in food production will tell the story for us. You've got to do and, it. And it's not about butting heads with people. It's just about putting out our story yeah. and trusting, giving people, crediting them with enough sure. intelligence to see that we've got nothing to hide. Sure. Right, let's end there, Well, We've got everything ready. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play it up yeah. um, and you see what I'm doing. I'm going to hand it over to you. I will attempt to copy. Attempt to do it on your plate. <laughs> I'm sure it'll look great. Um, and at the same time as we're doing that, I wanted to hear a bit more about your your podcast and what it is and kind of why you do it and the kind of people that you speak to as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I've done I've done 71 now. Um, 71. 71 podcasts. Wow. I try and try and do one every week. Yeah. Uh, how's that? Is that okay? That's schmear-tastic, <laughs> schmear-tastic, what can I say? And maybe just created a new word. Yeah, and I mean, I speak to such a variety of people. I mean, it's, I, one of the reasons, one of, quite a few reasons why I started, but one of them was yeah, you kind of have this perception of farmers, especially in the UK, of it being maybe all wheat, cows and sheep, yeah. depending on where you are. Sure. But there's so much more to it than that. There's so many more uh, people stories and there's so many more... There's just so many people doing such interesting things. Yeah. It can be quite hard to get them to talk and come out themselves. But as soon as you start talking about what they're passionate about, which is usually their, their livestock or their yeah. crops or what their d diversification they've done, you can't stop them talking and, yeah. and they're away and they're just so passionate about what they do. And these are, these are very highly successful people that, that could really work in any industry and they've chosen to come into agriculture and produce food because that's what they're passionate about. And being able to speak to them and learn it's more about their lives and well. what they're doing is is a real is a privilege, really. Yeah. Um, and I, I just love getting the chance to to share their stories. Really. There's some 
time as well, we'll pick a couple of leaves off there and, and put those on. So what do you, I mean, you as a, as a farmer, what do you think the biggest, I guess, consumer misunderstanding is um, when it comes to, to the way that to, you produce food? I think they think maybe, and again, as I said earlier, it, it, this is not, it's entirely not their fault. I think we've been very poor at farmers at getting across what we do. Some curry leaves on there. God, and that's rather amazing. Yeah. And I think perhaps they've, people maybe don't realise because we're so many generations removed now from farmers in people's families, you know, people yeah. don't, the vast majority of the people out there don't necessarily know a farmer or people involved in food production. So as we all do these days, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone, you, you hear a news story and then you may read a couple of features online and you think that you know it all about a subject. Yeah. <laughs> um, but usually it's, it's 280 characters on Twitter tell you everything that you need to know. Exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of the modern curse, isn't it? But yeah. once you start digging into something and you need to really speak to the people involved. And I think sometimes people think they forget that the food they're eating at the supermarkets is the food that I'm eating. I have four small children. Yeah. A safe and affordable food supply is important to me. I yeah. shop at the supermarket the same as you do and the same as everyone else does. Yeah. I haven't got a, I'm not keeping all the best stuff for myself, no. but <laughs> you know. So Will, we've made our salad. You, you're clearly a great cook. I think you're, you're hiding your light under a, under a bushel, claiming, yeah. claiming that you're, you're not a good cook. I'm gonna tell my wife that you said that. <laughs> Right, we're gonna we're gonna try some of this food, and, and while we have a, a chat, I'll pour you a bit of this um, bit of this wine. Because what better? Yeah. With a salad, a good, crisp Alsatian mm. um, white wine. So I hope you've enjoyed the, the experience. I've I've had a fascinating time talking to you. Really, it's been fantastic. I, I didn't I didn't chop my finger off, and uh, bonus, and I uh, got to talk about what I love for uh, what I love doing, and that's farming and food production and the people involved. So. Yeah, I've had a great time. So hashtag with or without. Encourage you all to, to engage with us there, ask questions, and you know, take part in the debate online. Um, give us comments on what you thought about what I've said, about what Will said. Yeah, I'm always happy to answer questions on food production and farming in the UK and what I do. Um, if anyone ever wants to ask me anything, please feel free. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I, I, that's my social media of choice. Um, and if you wanted to listen to the podcast, it is rockandrollfarming.com or just search Google or any, any good podcast app. So hashtag with or without or listening to, to Will at Rock and Roll Farming. Um, this has been the first episode of, of Let's Cook. Thanks very much for watching. And now, Will, let's dig in. <laughs>